On my recent Falconer, I played Circle of Fortune, and I went offline because the server issues were pretty rough at the start, and I just didn't want to deal with that. Which meant that I needed to spend a lot of time figuring out how to get my gear. Everything from the Exalted that I was going to slam into LP items, to target farming very specific LP items, such as Talons of Valor or Morningfrost, I needed to know where to get them. So I've spent quite a bit of time recently learning how to target farm in the last epoch. And today I want to share everything that I've learned so far. The focus of this video is primarily going to be farming unique since those are the easiest to target, but I will get into exalted items, especially towards the end. Just a word of warning, exalted items are rather difficult to target farm if you're a member of a merchant's guild and significantly easier if you're Circle of Fortune. Now, while I have been playing Circle of Fortune, I recently made a merchant's guild character to try the other side and see how it is. If you want to know my thoughts on that, the video will be out soon, so do be sure to get subscribed, leave a like while you're down there, and for now, let's get into things, starting with the basics of using the Monolith of Fate system to target farm primarily uniques, but also things like idols, and even exalted items if you're a little lucky. One source of target farming is the Echo Web, and this has pretty lush rewards. For example, this icon right here denotes boots, and it's exclusive to the Spirits of Fire. Each timeline has its own specific item classes, which can be rewarded. Spirits of Fire gives unique boots. And so if you're trying to farm something like Morning Frost, you'd want to run Spirits of Fire over and over and over again, build up the stability, build up the corruption, keep going deeper and deeper, and trying to do all the nodes you can. Alternatively, if you don't really care too much about what you want, but just want more uniques, maybe to sell as a member of a merchant's guild, you can absolutely just do random unique nodes. Though, as a note, they're 99% likely to be garbage and don't have any boss-specific drops, so just keep that in mind. It's probably not the best way to do it, but if you're desperate enough, it's better than nothing. On the other hand, if you want something like idols, look out for this icon. A bunch of idols will drop with the completion of a node. And exalted items work differently again, because idols are available everywhere, and exalted items are available everywhere but there aren't specific monoliths to target item classes. So you can go to Spirits of Fire for boots, but if you want exalted amulets, you'll have to wait for this node to show up within any timeline and its own echo web. It happens to be right here in Spirits of Fire, and down here there happens to be a chest node. One thing that can be especially nice is to look for a way to revert the completed echoes so that you can run these again i.e. maybe I want a bunch of idols, I'd run this, and this, and this, and this, and this, and this, all sorts of high-value nodes, then I'd run this, and I'd revert it, and I'd run them all over again, making my farming twice as efficient. And I'd probably do the boss as well, because that's another thing which you can target farm. Now, corruption isn't strictly mandatory to do any of this, but you should absolutely be doing your farming in empowered monoliths. Furthermore, the higher your corruption, the slightly higher chance to get LP items. So there is definitely a benefit. If you have a lot of good rewards, then do be sure to use a Vessel of Memory to revert everything and do them twice. Or alternatively, you could use a Vessel of Chaos to randomize all of the potential rewards on uncompleted echoes to get even more, then do the Vessel of Memory trick and get double your trouble. And just from personal experience so far, I have to say that Circle of Fortune is very, very, very broken for Exalted Drops. I haven't really needed to go out of my way to target farm Exalts the way I used to, because I was getting so many T6s that I stopped highlighting them on my filter. Instead, only double T6 and only relevant mods at that or relevant T7s get highlighted. Everything else is just kind of trash fit collects on the floor, which I'll occasionally turn on if I really need something special like, oh, I have eight items to go slam. I guess I need some fodder for that. As for Merchant's Guild, I suspect your farming is going to be a little bit more manageable and you'll at the very least be able to see the floor through the loot. So let's say you want to start target farming. Where do you go? For unique bows and quivers, start in Fall of the Outcasts right down here. Next up, head up to the Stolen Lance to the left if you want wands, scepters, staves, or catalysts. Alternatively, go to the right and deal with Raya in the Black Sun for helmets and shields. On the left, with Blood, Frost, and Death, you can get body armors. This is very good if you want something like Exsanguinous. Meanwhile, on the right, you'll have to deal with Lagan if you want to farm gloves. While the Empire awards belts, then you'll have to get off Heart and Ship as well. Meanwhile, up here, Reign of Dragons, where you deal with the Emperors of Corpses, is good for swords, axes, Maces, daggers, and spears, making it really difficult to farm because there's so many item classes. 
as I previously mentioned, Spirits of Fire for Boots. Then you come over here for the Last Ruin and Age of Winter. Last Ruin gives relics, Age of Winter gives rings and amulets. It's a little bit easier to farm in zones that only have one or two item classes. It can be a bit of a mess for zones that have three, four, and even five. But there's one more thing that you might want to target farm if you're going to be doing these zones, and those are the boss-specific drops. There are also boss-specific drops, some of which can be quite valuable. So the Abomination in the Fall of Outcast, for example, drops of a unique ring, Ribbons of Blood, the unique chest piece, Woven Flesh, and the unique shield, Flayer's Pride. I'm actually extremely familiar with his boss as I killed him over and over and over and over and over again to get multiple 2LP woven flesh and still didn't hit what I want because sometimes RNG is just RNG. But needless to say that if you're going after a boss specific drop, you're going to get very familiar with those bosses and get extremely good blessings from them as a result. And while you're target farming those bosses, do be sure to pick up one of the loot based blessings. These come from the timelines on the left side, starting with Fall of the Outcasts, where you can get an increased drop chance for unique items. I know, I know, these aren't reflected in your character's power, but trust me when I say, if you're going to be farming something a hundred or a thousand times, you might as well increase the odds. Just think of the increased drop chance as an additional layer of bad luck protection. If you're using any of the build guides over at Maxroll, we'll let you know if the item comes from a boss and which timeline to farm it in, if it's just dropping anywhere in the world. But there is one, arguably, even more powerful way to target farm in Last Epoch. That's right, now I'm talking about farming with the Circle of Fortune. So, in the north, you farm armor items. In the east, you farm weapons. In the south, you farm trinkets and jewelry. And in the west, you farm things like idols, runes, and glyphs. There's several different types, such as going in and completing a monolith event. Each one has its own unique indicator icon so that you can tell them apart if you have always show reward icons checked. Over here, for example, you can see this is any dungeon event. It's going to have this nice little icon here, the eight-pointed star. Coming down to the south, let's see if there's any arena. Yep, there's an arena event. And then this is kill a boss anywhere. It doesn't require a specific location to complete. So. Filling out prophecies is extremely rewarding, but it does require that you're a member of a Circle of Fortune. You should also use lenses to enhance your chances of getting what you want. In this case, I'm okay with getting a wider variety of armor, so I'm not blocking too much, but I am going for boots and uniques primarily. If I reroll here, it'll apply all of these effects, and there we go. I could kill Fire Lich Cremoris in the Soulfire Bastion Tier 2 and get a unique with one legendary potential. The problem of this is, it costs a lot. Now, it will be fulfilled twice, but it's still 19,000 favor. So this is kind of a bait in my experience, because you already get tons of LP just from being Circle of Fortune. So let's reroll that one more time. This time, Unique Belt from defeating Rye. Or alternatively, maybe I want to go do the Lightless Arbor and get some Exalted Helmets. That sounds pretty fun, actually. And I could use some more LP bait. Oh, unique boots. This might be my morning frost. And all I have to do is go kill the abomination. Well, I've been doing that anyway, because I wanted to farm a chest piece from him. So that's super efficient. And maybe I want to go and kill some siege golems. Five unique helmets is pretty good. I might get something cool, and it's only 6,000. Some prophecies are definitely a lot more cost efficient than others, even without a cost increase. So for example, here, seven weapons for 3,250 or three quivers for 1,500 from killing an exiled mage. I'm definitely going to pick this one up, because I think that I need some quivers, and it's also very cost efficient. A single unique quiver for 1,000, maybe that one's not the best, but I could get three exalted bows for killing immortal eyes. In general, you can either go for the really big prophecies or the really cost-efficient ones. And if you're doing the cost-efficient ones, you'll spend more time rolling, but you'll also spend more time picking up rewards. In the West, you get fun stuff, like a bunch of huge idols when you kill any rare enemies within the Temporal Sanctum. And sometimes you even get really cool things here. For example, the very rare Hybrid Health Affix Shard by going and killing Liath in the story. Alternatively, maybe you're running out of something important. Like Glyphs of Despair. You can actually roll those, though it is a fairly rare event. 
Let's see if it happens to cooperate and roll it for me right now. Oh, crit Strike Avoid. That's not quite Glyphs of Despair. Also, I don't know why I was mousing over those. None of those were the Glyph symbol. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, Rune of Creation? You know what? I'm going to count that as a win. It's not a Glyph of Despair, but arguably it's rarer. So I'm going to go Blast Fire Lich Cremoris in the Soulfire Bastion. One thing that you want to do is stack a lot of these prophecies together. And oh look, there's Glyph of Despair. See, they just wanted me to get the Runes of Creation first. If you stack a bunch of prophecies together, you get gigantic loot explosions. And also, it's just a little bit more efficient on your time. Remember, if there's some content that you absolutely don't want to do, then you should use a blocker. Also, don't do what I did here and just roll with no lenses. That makes it much less rewarding and is kind of a waste. Always have as many lenses as you can fit as you're rolling. You can either block things that you don't like, enhance the chances of things that you need, or bias it towards a certain type of item. And if you need to know where to go in the story to fight a specific enemy, don't worry, I've got you for that as well. So if you have a prophecy and it tells you to go kill some monsters and you need to know where they are, I recommend coming over to Tunk Lab and checking out the Bestiary. This lists all the monsters in the game. And so the brand new giant scorpions, where can I find those? I guess I should have specified giant scorpions instead of just giant. There's a lot of giants in Last Epoch. All right, here we go. You can find them all over. So I would happily head off to any of these timelines and go kill some giant scorpions. On the other hand, let's say Siege Golem. Well, Siege Golem might be a little rarer. Yep, it only appears in some of the timelines, or I'd go back to these zones and murder them there instead. And so now let's put that into practice for a second. I spent some time and quite a bit of my favor stacking up a bunch of prophecies focused on the Temporal Sanctum and Julra. Now I'm going to run through and go bonker real quick. And don't worry, I promise the loot will kind of sort of fit on the screen a little bit. Okay, honestly, not really. Is this a realistic example? Well, yes, I'd say it is, especially since I'm not ranked 10 yet and this could be literally double. It's not going to be every explosion, but if you spend 20, 30k favor like I did here, you could absolutely get massive explosions, especially if you focus in on one reward type. In general, though, you're probably not going to get loot explosions this big from one location. Instead, you're going to get this much loot spread across a bunch of different things. Your next couple monolith bosses, a few exiled mages, etc, etc. It's kind of wasteful to stack it all on just one boss. The only reason I did it is to show you just how much loot drops here. And so that's everything that I've learned so far about how to target farm in Last Epoch. But I'm curious, do you have any tips or tricks that you use when target farming, which I didn't mention in this video or you think people might find helpful? If so, do be sure to put them down below. And hey, if one stands out to me as being really, really good, I might even pin it so everyone else can see it better. On the other hand, if you're looking for something else to watch, maybe you're a beginner just trying to progress, check out my video on how to progress into empowered monoliths, which I'll link up in the card and down below, alongside the resources mentioned in this video. Now, before I go, I'd like to take a minute to thank my patrons and channel members for their continued support. For as low as $1 a month, you cannot make videos just like this one possible. I had an absolute blast playing Dive Bomb Falconer, but as it turns out, Wardlock is pretty darn fun too. And because I went Merchant's Guild, I was even able to go low life immediately, way earlier than I should. But don't worry, more on that coming soon. So thank you very much for watching to the end. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next one.